And we're here with my favorite guest, Dr. Steph. So that's Dr. Stephanie Peacock, to those of you who may not know her yet. Um, she's pretty amazing. She does all kinds of cool things. You can watch some of the videos that we've done. We've talked about toxins and cleaning products and dishes. We talked about chronic fatigue syndrome. And today we are going to talk about water fasting and kind of why, how. I'm also gonna let Dr. Steph introduce herself to you, but I was at Live Your Best Life Conference this weekend in Sacramento, California. We just got back last night. And Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle were there, of course, because it was the Chef AJ event. And it's kind of like the trinity of Chef AJ events. There were other wonderful, wonderful speakers as well. Uh, but there was some talk about fasting, and I met a lot of people who have done fasting. So, Doc Staff, why don't you give us a little introduction about yourself and maybe the definition of water fasting and like when you use it like just kind of the 101 and then we can go from there yeah it sounds great thanks kathy again for having me i like i always say i'm obsessed with these lives that we do once a month even if they're only 30 minutes i know today we're gonna do 45 but you know it's just being able to get on here and talk, talk with your community and like we learn from each other all kinds of stuff and i just i'm so happy to be on here so thanks again for having me um, I'm a holistic uh, gut specialist down in Southern California. Um, my practice is completely virtual and I work with all kinds of different conditions resolving, um, revolving around chronic gut issues. Um, Plant-based is a big part of my practice uh, and also talking about environmental chemicals as those can be a big source of why somebody may be dealing with chronic gut issues and other types of issues as well, like chronic fatigue syndrome, like we touched on the last time I was down here. Um, but today we're gonna be talking about water fasting. So, <laughs> and I think it's so funny that it, that um, Kathy happened to be at that conference that they were talking about water fasting. Dr. Goldhammer was there and um, the founder of True North Health Center, which is a world renowned water fasting facility in Santa Rosa, California. And I happened to actually work there. So I worked there during um, the years of 2020 to 2021, where I was medically supervising water fasting patients. Um, and I do incorporate fasting within my practice. And here's the reason why. So I'm just slowing down my treadmill. I feel like I'm walking too quickly. <laughs> so water fasting is something that allows our body to tap into its innate healing mechanisms. So and it, the way we're being able to tap into that is without any sort of distraction from the outside environment. So that's including food, that's including any chemicals, that's including working, right? Stress, it, it's getting your body into this complete rested state where then it can use all of its energy to healing your body. Um, so what we know with fasting is a few different things. So first, water fasting allows our body to create something called autophagy, which is basically getting rid of these old um, ce like cells that can potentially turn into chronic diseases and regenerating new stem cells. Um, also, what it does is, like I mentioned before, when we're getting into this state of healing without any external sources, um, this is the reason why, is because 80% of our body's energy actually goes towards digesting food. So even if you're eating the healthiest food on the planet, but you're dealing with something very chronic, sometimes being able to just even get rid of that healthy food, the plant-based, whole food, plant-based foods, and just water fast for a, a certain amount of time will allow your body to then use that energy that's getting used to digest foods, use it as nutrients, things like that, and use it towards healing your body. So that's another really big one. And what's wonderful about True North Health Center is that it, they house up to almost 70 patients now. Um, anywhere, water fasting is recommended anywhere between three and 40 days. Um, and three days is more for like the detoxification type um, thing, maybe working on a couple of things, like maybe more for your gut to be able to just give your gut a break, regenerate stem cells within your in small intestine, which we see happen around day three, day four. Um, and then anywhere up to 40 days where we see those are conditions that we're trying to reduce high blood pressure. We're trying to re, um, uh, control insulin and blood sugar and things like that to help control um, diabetes, kind of more like lifestyle factors. Autoimmune conditions, we're seeing um, around three weeks seems to be that perfect time to support in um, putting any sort of autoimmune condition in remission. So there's different, it, it's very dependent on what your condition is 
for water fasting, right? And so within my practice, I do virtual water fasting. I only do up to five days. Um, and I, I only work with very specific conditions for this. So I will give an example of a patient that I did work with a few months ago that came to me that had been um, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes about a couple of years ago and was, um, but was told to go on the ketogenic diet, which ketogenic ket ketosis is what we're getting into with water fasting, right? Um, instead of our body. I never knew it. that. Oh my God. Oh, really? Oh, oh my God. Cool? I had never yeah. heard that. I may be the only one, but you No, you, oh, no the camera's not. on you right now, but my eyes kind of bugged out. Stephanie saw it, but nobody, none of you guys did. <laughs> no, and, and you know, that's the thing is fasting is it involves so many things that's occurring in the body. Like certain things are increasing, decreasing. And so, no, it makes total sense. And that, that's the why, why the ketogenic diet or that, you know, carnivore diet, whatever is touted is so beneficial because it's getting your body into those key, that ketosis state, ketogenic state, where it's allowing your body to not rely on its number one fuel source, which is carbohydrates and glucose, right? And so there's a lot of benefits to being in that ketosis state, but the problem with the ketogenic diet is that, yes, you're getting that ketosis state if you're doing it correctly, but you're incorporating so many high saturated fat foods from animal products that are just so bad for you. So you're getting some good benefits from ketosis, but bad benefits from being on a ketogenic diet. So it kind of, you know, cancels each other out. So that's where fasting is the best. <laughs> or you, you actually could do a plant-based ketogenic diet. Um, there's a book out there, a few books, I think, on it, um, where you would eat high amounts of um, fat foods that are on a plant-based diet. So much, much, much healthier. <laughs> I have seen that. And so a couple of things. So uh, Simply Obs, who, who shows up sometimes, she's a friend of mine and she's awesome, you guys. So you should like check out her channel too. She does a lot of inspirational stuff. Um, she has um, a traumatic brain injury that she survived, which is pretty awesome. Um, oh. Yeah, and so she was wondering, and I, I think we're all pretty assuming that you are on the treadmill right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't bounce up I, and down as much I, as I do. You're I'm like smooth. I know, I'm kind of like swaying a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I got this treadmill a few months ago and I've been using it on and off and I forget who I told that I have one. So then sometimes I'm like, some people are like, why are you like, you're just like kind of swaying. I'm like, oh, I'm walking on a treadmill, just very slow. <laughs> so, That's sorry. awesome though. I've been doing my like speedy treadmill talks. My little head bounces around and, and people don't mind at all. Now another, I have a question. Let me find um, CJ from, um, Scotland says, what happens to the microbiome if it's not being fed during this fasting time? Yes. And so that's such a great question. So again, what we've seen is that, and keep in mind that there still isn't a ton of literature yet on fasting, but True North is also a research center as well. So they have come out with tons of amazing research um, regarding a lot of different things. When it comes to the intestinal microbiome, We've seen around day three, day four, I believe it's around day four is where we see that small intestinal and the large intestine, the stem cells within there start to actually regenerate. And then oftentimes we actually see more of a beneficial good gut bacteria start to thrive versus the bad bacteria. So it's actually really amazing for those that might be dealing with any sort of like gut issues because it really helps to support the, um, the growth of those beneficial bacteria. And um, really quickly, just wanted to touch on that patient I was talking about before that had um, that went on that ketogenic diet. What happened was from that point is when type 2 diabetes can actually get out of control, what happens is you can start to get really horrible nerve pain um, to the point where like you are just, I mean, it, it's, it's just constant. You can't sleep. You can't really think about a whole lot of else because you're just dealing with nerve pain down your arms and your legs. Um, and usually actually starts in the hands and starts in the feet and then it will work its way up. By the time I saw this patient, this patient had pain that had pretty much traveled up the entire body. And so we did a few things first to start. So I'm always about starting with the lifestyle, not no need to jump into a crazy water fast right away. I think trying to start with food first is really important. So we switch over to whole food plant-based, um, tried to do different things like that, optimizing some omega-3s, things like that to help support that insulin response and still no relief from the pain. So we did a five day water fast um, remote. Cause I, like I said earlier, that's just the highest I will go working remotely with patients. And so uh, checking in daily by day four, day four in the afternoon, 
the nerve pain decreased from a, sorry, so by day three, nerve pain was at a 10, had been at a 10 pretty much for the past year, went from a 10 to an eight. So we knew we were on the right track. So we were like, and this person had not, this patient had not received that kind of relief in over a year. Then day four, it went down to a two. And then day five, gone. And it's been about seven or eight months since we've done that fast, has had no pain since. Absolutely no pain. So it's amazing what water fasting can do. And it, it, it kind of fast tracks things, right? So I believe, I, I'm always a believer, and I know Goldhammer is, and all the other people in the fasting community, that plant-based foods will get you there. But what fasting does, it kind of fast tracks you. So sometimes th- th- those situations, it's necessary. Somebody's in that kind of pain, dealing with any sort of really bad chronic condition. Sometimes it's just getting into a water fast, even five days will be very, very beneficial. So I'm sorry, Kathy, I know you were about to say something. Oh, no, 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 I love that. Oh, I actually can't hear you. I don't know if your microphone's off, sorry. It's that stupid thing, I unmute myself on one scene and then it's not supposed to be staying muted on another. I'm gonna pay better attention, I solemnly swear. So, it, the magic number of days for being on a whole food, plant-based, no-oil diet for Cheryl's medications to change was four. And after four days of just doing whole food, plant-based, no-oil, my inflammation, like I could feel my inflammation just kind of release I'm a deep. lot. So it's very interesting. So what I'm hearing is like fasting kind of can speed things up. So what would be a reason not to fast? Are there certain people who should not fast and maybe why? Yeah, yeah. So there are certain types of conditions where fasting is just not going to be um, recommended depending on the state. So for very, very, very elderly individuals, we wouldn't recommend that just because the muscle mass uh, ratio is its very important as we get older to have that protein, the muscle mass. Um, as we are older, so sometimes fasting can be a little bit um, not recommended. It's it's always, again, going to be case to case. And then again, young individuals. So it's kind of like with everything, like with medications, all kinds of stuff. It's like young individuals or older individuals, we kind of like, you know, be careful there. Could you um, put a number typically- on that? I know- I know we're guesstimating. Oh. It could be you could be a sixty-five-year-old who who really seems oh. like they're in their forties. Like, are you talking eighty-five? Thank you, thank you for clarifying. I would rec- usually it's around like eighty-five and up is where we kind of see like we, we would more like really take into consideration. Okay, like what's your condition? Um, what's going on lifestyle-wise? Things like that before we would recommend a fast. Um, and then kids usually I would think it's usually around like eleven and twelve and younger is kind of where we will kind of stop as, as well. Um, others are going to be um, stage four cancer, just because the cancer at that point, um, I believe what Goldhammer says is that fasting alongside the chemotherapy would be beneficial, but not solely relying on the fasting alone at that, at that point. Um, and then, uh, oh goodness, I... You know, there's a couple other of conditions I just can't think of off the top of my head. Just right little now. specific things. This is nice yeah. general stuff for for yeah. us kind of yeah. to know. And if if you have a client, let's see, if you have a client coming to you, um, what are some things you might look at to start at fasting, or do you do something, you know, like is your go-to? okay, let's try whole food plant-based or is, you know, what other things would be go-to? Let's go ahead and see about fasting for a couple of days. Right. Yeah. That's a, just such a great question. So, um, yeah, I actually, I always start, I always, always start at um, lifestyle factors first, always, um, just to see what we can get in control first. And like, so with that other patient, that's what I did. We did great um, supplements, like, you know, just like, you know, omega threes, vitamin B2, making sure we're getting on a proper supplement regimen as a plant-based individual. Um, but also upping the nutrient in, in, um, intake, right. Movement, optimizing sleep, things like that, you know, cause there's so many factors that can contribute to, um, all a host of different conditions. So I always start with that first. And then, you know, after a couple of sessions, if I'm, or, you know, if I'm no, or, a, a, you know, a few weeks or something, if I'm noticing that they're, if they're still in a lot of pain or if they're still really struggling and they're, they're really on board with fasting and I don't see anything like medication wise or, you know, like the, 
like we mentioned before, like, for example, like um, if they do qualify for fasting, then I will absolutely be like, okay, let's just do it. Let's go for it. And we'll, um, we'll see how this goes. And usually I'll recommend anywhere between three to five days. Um, we see that magic number of autophagy kind of be around at day four as well. Um, which is kind of funny. I feel like we're seeing this pattern of day four here. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, really interesting, but, right? Like, yeah. I, it's, it, it surprised me that Cheryl and I both felt b better on a certain day. So that's why I was just curious. Now, cool. Kathy, who is um, from my um, cohort said, are you aware of reputable water fasting facilities on the East Coast? Um, on the East Coast, there's, there's one, one in um, Florida, right? That Chef AJ talks um, about. So the one in Florida, I believe that is the one that's run by um, Dr. Frank Sabatino. And yes, I believe it's more like water fasting retreat type stuff. I, you don't, don't, um, don't want to quote me on this. So it's still wonderful. And he's been at True North. He understands. And I believe Dr. Clapper will be involved in it too. So um, wonderful individuals that are very knowledgeable about fasting. So if I was to send anybody on the East Coast to any facility, it would be there for sure. I just don't think, I'm not sure if it's kind of like True North Health Center on the West Coast where it's like, you know, it's constant year round fasting versus like a retreat type of thing. So that's what I'm not completely sure of, but I do know there's a water fasting center in Ohio um, that is wonderful. That was run by a doctor who trained at True North for three years. So that's really great. And then there, I, don't quote me on this either, but I, I, I believe, and I've had a few patients that actually have um, gone there. So I know that one's very a very great facility. Um, I believe there is one in Arizona. And then there's another one run by Dr. Nathan Gershfeld. So like I said, I only do up to five days of water fasting because it's not the main part of my practice. Um, but you just use it in conjunction with treatment. But he actually just solely does water fasting, but it's actually completely remote. So he'll do up to weeks and weeks of water fasting. He trained for three years actually under Dr. Goldhammer and he, he did have a um, physical facility in Southern California. And then I believe he just transitioned to full remote about a year ago or maybe six months ago. So um, he's also another, his, his fasting center is called Fasting Escape. So for some people it's hard to, you know, physically get up and leave to go to a fasting center. Um, so for him, it's, it, that could be a little bit of an easier one to, um, save money at the two um, travel and things like that. And is there, um, other than going past five days, is there a reason to be in a facility versus having it facilitated and doctor kind of observed from your house? Yeah. So when you're going past that five day mark, right? Like, so even with my patients that I'm going up to five days, we're still doing um, blood pressure checks. So I make sure they get a blood pressure monitor. I know Gershwell does this too. So blood pressure monitor, you're getting your blood glucose every day. Um, Check-ins twice a day with your doctor to make sure like to see how you're feeling. Cause there's all kinds of things that can come up while you're fasting that aren't dangerous, but that, you know, might require like some help. So for example, like if you're nauseous, drinking carbonated water can be very helpful to alleviate that nausea, um, sniffing peppermint oil, um, things like that sometimes really bad cramping can happen from the toxin release so heating pad so there's all kinds of things that can kind of come up which is important to be doing the check-ins um but then again there are things that could come up too past that even before five days can absolutely happen which is why i'm very particular about who it is i, I will fast um you know when i when i do do the five days but yes there are things that can come up right so um that uh, could be a little bit scary for sure, depending on the individual. So, I, you know, going to a, a facility is going to be very, very um, important in that piece. And I believe Gershfeld probably does a really great job. Of, I know he has a wonderful facility and he's been in practice with this for many years. So um, I know he probably properly screens his patients too, to make sure that, you know, if he would recommend, oh, okay, remote is fine for you for a couple of weeks, but, you know, or maybe another patient, he'd say, you know, depending on your health history, I think you need more of an actual physical check-in by doctors to be there. Cause you know, True North Health Center is also very, very close to an emergency room, to a hospital. So in, in case there is a need that they need to go um, to the hospital, things like that. Cause there's, again, there's always things that can come up for you during fasting. So yeah, great, great question. That that, that's awesome. And I'm trying to think like, so if I did a fasting with you, am I checking in with my normal GP twice a day or am I checking in with you or? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you would be checking in with me. We're going to go over all your symptoms. We're going to go and before we even would fast you, 
we would prepare you for what would what could possibly come up for you like the most common symptoms like skin rashes you know maybe a little bit of nausea maybe some acid reflux things like that um and there's different remedies that you can do during the fast to alleviate those symptoms so we get you prepared so you have all that stuff with you and then what we also prepare you for is the refeeding phase so we talk all about the fasting phase but the refeeding phase is just as important because you know after doing a five-day fast the last thing your body wants and that you will learn to not want is diving into like a really intense like starchy meal with you know all this kind of foods like your gut is just going to be overwhelmed by the amount of things it has to process because it's gone five or so days without eating so you have to refeed very slowly so the way we start is usually with either like something that can easily break a fast that's like high fructose so something like watermelon is how we'll break a fast so we either do like watermelon cut up or you juice watermelon and some celery um, things like that. So we always start with usually juicing as the first way to kind of wake the body up naturally from being in that fasted state. And then we move into incorporating some raw vegetables and fruits, and then some steamed vegetables and fruits. And then we work our way into some starches. So maybe a little bit of like steamed potatoes, things like that. And then you can end with um, like kind of maybe some like rice and beans and things like that. Um, but the reef, I will mention one other thing, the refeeding phase always has to be half the time of your fast. So for patients, let's say that are at True North, let's say they fasted for 20 days, um, they would have to refeed for 10 days on that very strict schedule. So it would end up being, two, so the refeeding phase is a five phase approach. So it would be two days of juicing, two days of raw foods and juice, two, phase, uh, two days of the steamed vegetables, two days of adding in more starches, and then two days of what we call unrestricted, where you can eat beans, you can eat any type of dressing that you want, you can go back to that whole food plant-based eating. Okay, that makes really good sense. So I have a couple of things. Joy said, I love intermittent fasting, which is a little different. It helped me lose yeah. 84 pounds in 2020. I do water fasting 48 to 72 hours about four times a year, which is awesome. Window to my Great. life says, what's the optimal water fasting day goal? For instance, what glucose reading is the optimal level while water fasting? And I know some of that could be per maybe give a ballpark like or something. Oh man, and that's a thing is that it, it, I, I know it, people probably hate to hear this, but it is so variable because some patients might come in with blood sugar that started at like over 300 that first have to, you know, fast down to, sorry, first have to get it down to 200 before you can even start fasting because we never fast. That's another thing, by the way, we never fast anybody that has above that 200 mark on blood glucose readings um, because when we're fasting, that can get a little bit out of whack and we just don't want to mess with that. So, um, but again, it's going to depend on how high it is. So, you know, I, I've seen blood glucose get better on day three. I've seen it normalize at day 20. So it's, it's, it is so, so variable just depending on, um, a, a bunch of different factors, like how high that uh, glucose reading typically is for you. Um, and then, uh, but I will say just in general, the day that you would, that want to get to for sure with fasting to get that autophagy benefit is day four. That's where we see it cemented in. So um, that's why we do. And I believe that's probably why Dr. Walter Longo, he has a five day fasting mimicking diet um, because when you get to day five, you can really cement that autophagy. His thing is, um, He's out of the University of Southern California and um, studied fasting in rats for many, many years. Um, and he came up with this diet. It's like a box that gets delivered to you um, with different foods that are actually, it's all whole food plant-based and it's, um, it mimics fasting. So it doesn't, it tricks your body to think that it's fasting, but it's, um, you're still getting about 600 calories a day. So you can eat and function when you're, you know, fasting because, you know, fasting can really take a toll on you. Like I've done, a, I've personally done a five day water fast and it was very, sorry, my cat is in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Someone say it. little ta tail wave to the community. I, like I love too. that you're talking about refeeding because like Dr. Goldhammer was talking about that and like, if anyone has not seen Dr. Goldhammer speak, you have to. He actually is hilarious. He's hilarious. Um, his <laughs> sense of humor is very, very dry because he was talking about fasting. He's like, well, you know, out of the, I think he kept saying 25,000 people that he's fasted, no one has ever died because we refeed correctly of any of the studies of the blah, blah, blah. You know, so like, and I wasn't even thinking about that. So I'm so glad you mentioned it. 
And then um, also yeah. I have a couple of questions like, do you accept insurance? And I don't know, but I think not that insurance doesn't pay for general water fasting. Am I incorrect? You're, yeah, you, you're, no, you're correct in saying that general insurance does not cover water fasting, um, unfortunately. And, um, but I, but actually I do all, I also do not accept insurance. I'm a solo practice. It's just me. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's just dealing with all the, you know, you know, patients and then, um, messaging and plans. And then I, I just don't have time to deal with the insurance piece as well. So I, um, I do not, maybe if my practice got a little bit bigger, maybe, but, um, I don't believe even true North health center, um, accepts, uh, it's just cash. Um, but you know, Hey, I, ta I talked to Dr. Goldhammer. So like you guys, if you're interested in going, you can actually request to have a little talk. And like literally he just called me up one day. It was the weirdest. And, and the fact that I was not on Do Not Disturb is like miraculous. But <gasps> and so I'm like, hello. He's like, this is Dr. Goldhammer. And I'm like, this is the weirdest moment of my life. But um, and he can answer some questions for you. But I think there were certain things like certain parts of the doctor visit or certain tests that it was very minimal that of the things that could be covered by insurance. Um, so, oh, uh oh, I think we lost Stephanie. She'll come back in. There she comes. Yay. Oh I'm sorry, that was the first time that's happened. It said I was disconnected, so I'm really sorry about that. I don't know how that oh, happened. You're groovy, and we're all back, and that's wonderful. Yeah. That's all we need. You came back, snapped back into all the places okay. that I put you. <laughs> um, and this is also very interesting. Um, Elisa saying, just joined, I was wondering if it's safe to fast for 24 hours without water. And also after doing something like that, what types of food to eat after that fast? Do you really mean without water? Because I don't know that that's, I've never heard. Not safe, not safe at all. Yeah, dry fast, it's called dry fasting and it's it's very unsafe, the, wa the body needs water. So the body can go without food for a very, very, very long time. There's a lot of health issues that could come up with dry fasting. And I know when I worked at True North Health Center, um, there were a couple patients that had it on their own decided to um, potentially try it. And it's just um, best to just stick with the water. But, and, and when you're doing water fasting, the one thing I wanna say is that um, it's important to have quality water as well. So I know we have talked and we can even do, maybe future episode, we could talk about water filtration because that is a huge one. There's all kinds of water filters out there. Um, I'd be happy to touch on that maybe next time as a follow-up to water fasting, but you wanna make sure you have quality water because there's over 280 contaminants found in our water supply from pesticides to heavy metals to even birth control pills and um, yeah, all that stuff. And so you wanna make sure that when you're fasting, you are having quality water too. Um, and there's with, a uh, clarification too, Elisa. So now this is a new comment, it says, there's a Jewish holiday coming that doesn't let you drink water. And I think that could be a little different. And I would assume that there's been lots of studies done within that and that probably your rabbi can help you do that properly yeah. if you have some questions, unless you have something to add to that. Because yeah, I Don't. lots of religions do things different like that, but like without having that clarification, mm -hmm. I was on Dr. Steph's side because I was like, Ooh, that sounds super dangerous is all I just felt like yeah my little inner like lizard brain was like no uh, but it's a different thing when you're doing it as a part of your cultural traditions and those things have been established and obviously the culture has continued so therefore it works in that situation now what about if we wanted to water fast at home or would you Okay, let's say that I'm fast and curious, right? So would I would I do better maybe just having a day of juicing? Although like, you know, Dr. McDougall, most of the whole food plant-based no oil doctors are like, don't drink your calories. Obviously this, and I wanna be specific for the audience. I know you understand what I'm asking, but I'm not saying let's now start juicing every morning. But if we were doing something to try on my own, would it be better to do 24 hours of water fasting, 24 hours with celery juice, watermelon juice? How would you go around that? Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so um, again, it's really important to, I think, depending on the condition and the person um, to kind of talk with someone who 
um, understands fasting, right, to, to help guide you, because there are instances where I will recommend more of a juice fast. When it comes to, I will mention with juice fasting, um, that, well, okay, first of all, if you're just doing like 24 hours to 48 hours by yourself fasting, like that's really fine. Like you can try that on your own water fasting, things like that. Um, again, there are things that can come up. So I always still recommend working with somebody, but you know, that's enough time to work. Usually nothing will happen. So, um, but when it comes to juice fasting, it can, again, we're trying to get into that ketogenic state, which the way to get into it is um, basically not eating any glucose, right? Any carbs. So um, juicing still will have a little bit of that carbohydrate in there. Um, and so it's important if you are doing a juice fast to get into that ketosis state quicker, you actually want to make sure that when you're fasting, you're not fasting with any, anything that can spike that insulin response, right? So don't use fruits. So when you're fasting, you wouldn't use like, you wouldn't make like a celery juice that also had like a little bit of apple or watermelon in it. That's why we actually use watermelon to break a fast. So yeah. So with juicing, I see a lot of people doing like these juicing fasts and things like that. And you know, the cleanses and stuff. And, you know, those are great for maybe giving your body a little break, but uh, from digesting, but it's not going to really get you into that ketogenic state. Um, so, but celery juices, you juicing, you usually have to be on a longer juice to kind of achieve that ketosis state. So, um, but still, again, there's benefits to juicing when you are um, giving your digestive system a break. You know, that's a great reason to um, just kind of give your body a little break from digesting foods and things like that. So I hope that answered your question. I think I may have gone a little bit no, no, you, you totally, no, you totally did. And, and, you know, we all understand medical questions often don't have direct answers. And I yeah. just want to say. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you again. Sorry. Even when I'm trying to help someone, like, fix a Ninja Creamy question, sometimes it becomes very specific, right? So mm -hmm. even something that should, you, you're like, why would that ever be? Uh, it depends. Well, it depends on how cold your freezer is, right. right? It depends on, you know, is your blood sugar usually high? Do you have high blood pressure, right? There's all these things that probably go into it. Do you have a lot of, do you have weight to release? Are you really trying to gain weight? I would think someone maybe that's very thin and can't afford to lose a little extra weight during that time might be treated differently than someone like me who's working to release some of those pounds. Would that be? You're completely right. And that's actually another thing that I didn't mention when you asked, um, you know, when, uh, what's, what, are, what are some populations that might not be what we shouldn't fast? And that's, again, someone who is very, very thin, like has a BMI. Usually it's, we measure it at a BMI below 16, 16 or below, 16.5 or below. Um, that's where we wouldn't fast because again, you know, there's not a lot we're, essentially what we're doing with fasting to get into that ketosis state too, is it's, it's the body specifically mobilizing fat is, uh, to be able to turn it into ketones. Now the body can do the same thing with protein from our muscle mass. Right. And so that's why, um, we want to make sure that that person has some fat stores on them, right. To be able to actually undergo this fast. And that's another reason why, you know, at Turner North health center, one of the biggest things we'll hammer harps on is no exercise like no, no be careful with even walking when you're fasting because if you do that you're getting the body into that state of starting to use muscle right and then the body will start to want to preserve its fat and start to actually go towards muscle stores to create ketones which we don't want we're trying to get rid of the fat which has the toxins in it which has the things that are inflammatory yeah it's crazy so sometimes i catch patients just walk in and do all that, you know, like crazy miles. I'm like, oh, no, 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 you got to rest. You got to rest. <laughs> See, that would totally be me. That would totally be me because I'm like, and and we should talk too because maybe, maybe we, maybe I should, we should talk and maybe I should do a fast. You could film it or something and use it in your thing. We'll talk about it. I'm, I'm, I could be yes. a guinea pig, but I, it, like not walking, like the thing that makes me nervous about True North, and I'm, I'm not saying I would never go, it's just like being tired, maybe feeling nauseous, not having my normal coping mechanisms. Walking is, is like a meditation and an exercise for me. So that worries me a little bit. And I don't know if anybody else has these worries. So if you have some different ones, put them down in there um, in the comments and I'll ask them. But it's just, I also think it would be kind of 
if you don't feel really, really crappy, and I guess you kind of don't know till you're already in the midst of it, if you don't feel crappy, it seems like it would be a great self-care vacation where you rest and you read. And <laughs> how, out of your patients, what do you find maybe the top benefits during the fast? Not We know there's lots after the fast, and maybe what are some of the pitfalls during? Yeah, so, um, I would say that usually the biggest benefit I see is that the fact that, well, I mean, you know, aside from the fact that if they're dealing with chronic pain and things like that, typically we start to see that really dissipate. And that's just a huge win because some patients just have had pain for a very, very long time. So that's a big one. But another piece to it is that, you know, it's, it kind of gets you, it, believe it or not, fasting actually gets you into a bit of a meditative state. Um, and like, I'm like you, I love to exercise. I love to walk. I love walking. Like, that's why I have this treadmill right now. <laughs> I'm walking. <laughs> and um, and so, you know, when I fast, I did my five-day water fast at True North, and then I've done fast at home since. And, you know, it's, um, I thought I was going to really struggle with not exercising. I really did without, with not walking. And, and, you know, it's okay to move. Like, you can still move a little bit. You know, you just don't want to go on, like, a five-mile walk. But, um, you know, but actually, believe it or not, you really get into this meditative state where you actually feel like you're kind of just becoming more in tune with your body because you're letting it rest. You're finally letting it rest and not focus on digesting foods, not focusing on, you know, it's okay to work a little during fasting, but you do have to kind of reduce that amount just a little bit because it's important. Like Goldhammer says, that's that's one of the biggest benefits too with going to a center if, is because if you're doing a very long fast, because you're kind of stuck there, <laughs> like you can't really go off and do like working and things. So, um, so that helps too. So it, it's kind of just getting a break from the outside world and letting your body just finally rest. Cause we're so, I know we've talked about this before, I think in the chronic fatigue one, where, you know, our world, it's so hard to get away from stress now, even good stress, but it's just, everyone's just on the go. It's just everyone around you is rushing to something and you, it's so easy for our nervous system to get caught up in that. So when you let your body rest and just let it heal, that's a huge, huge benefit. So that's a big thing I see. Um, but I would say maybe some of the pitfalls, um, some of the most common symptoms that I usually get with fasting and that I will even get myself, my personal biggest one I usually get, um, is so um it's when my body's detoxifying so i start to get some pretty bad like muscle aches and cramps and that can be really annoying actually usually you get it in the legs or the lower back it's very common because it's usually in the larger muscle groups um so that's probably a big one i see um and then um let's see nausea is another one i don't really get that but other patients of mine do acid reflux maybe getting some like light headaches um and then being pretty fatigued you know you're pretty you get a little bit tired once you start to hit like day three day four um I would say probably about in about 50% of people, but the other 50%, some people are just like bounding off the you know walls. They're like so much energy. <laughs> Fasting just affects everybody differently. Um, so some people are very energetic and feel great. Like I've seen patients walking upstairs and doing amazing things on day 39 and 40 of a water fast. Like, and then I've seen- I can't patients even like, imagine. It's amazing. I was like, and so when I, when I worked there for about eight months before I did my own water fast. And so I had seen all kinds, right. But I would say the majority of people are pretty good fasters. When I did it, I, I struggled actually my energy, my um, muscle cramping. I, I would say I was probably a pretty, uh, I was pretty tired, <laughs> but, um, but you know, again, because it affects everybody differently. So I went into it thinking, yeah, I'm going to be all woo. And I was not, but, um, but again, and there's remedies for it. Right. So there's things you can do during a fast to increase your energy a little bit if you're feeling a little lightheaded, which is a, co a common one I get. Um, and that's where you maybe, again, we that's how we work together is I give you a recipe for like a homemade veggie broth that won't, um, uh, what do you call it, um, break your fast. So break your ketos ketosis state. So it gives you a little bit of like natural electrolytes to give your body that energy to be a little bit less fatigued, less lightheaded, things like that. Oh, that sounds, that sounds so lovely. Like I worry a little bit because you know all those silly signs that said i'm sorry for what i did when i was hangry those were written for me actually they're oh, written dear. for cheryl too cheryl, she, the only thing is i know i'm hangry and i will say i know i'm hangry give me some food and then i'll say i'm sorry cheryl doesn't realize it ever happened she eats some food and then she's normal and nothing ever happened like jekyll and hyde so <laughs> are there a lot of emotional or um components yeah. that can happen with it too yeah there is there um again like kind of like i mentioned before too i was saying how you know it, it, you kind of just become more in tune with your body like sometimes what can happen is 
yeah, it can be like a bit of an emotional release, but in like a good way. Like, so it's, it's actually something we learn as we're getting trained at True North is that if a patient starts to just cry on you or starts to really have an emotion, like let it, it's important to let it flow, like let it out because it's the body, like your body's healing. So it, it, there are things that get released actually during fasting. And I, for me, I was on like day four and I really got into this hyper present state when I was fasting. Like I felt very present very meditative. It was absolutely incredible. So, um, the age of different things come up for everybody. And sometimes people just go through the whole thing, like as if they're like fine and everything, like all good to go. And, you know, so it's, it's so dependent on the person and maybe what they've been through or what they're going through. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's pretty amazing what fasting can do. And that's, what's wonderful is it's, you know, it's like, it's, it's an ancient thing. Like our ancestors fasted, like that's, they went through the times of scarcity where they were fasting and that, so we were actually meant to fast. And so that's actually what's, um, the beautiful thing about it. It's not like this new thing that just got invented. It's actually quite old and quite, um, our bodies are actually adjusted to that. And when we let it go through a nice water fast, even if you do two or three days, it's good to let your body have a little bit of a break. I love that. And just kind of like we were talking a little bit earlier, you see in a lot of the different world's religions that there are these festivals or these special days of fasting or special weeks of fasting. So, you know, Elisa has another question. Is there a minimum amount of days to water fast for it to be impactful? Does it maybe depend on what you're trying to get out of it? Yeah, again, yeah, so great question and it, it will, matter like what you're trying to get out of it what condition you're working for but but that for to get that autophagy where you are regenerating those new stem cells just to get the benefits of that getting to day four is really important so um that's where we see is that it's kind of like that magic number for um for autophagy at least i was like reading the comments i was deep and lost in the comment i know we have to go in a minute um, one yeah, thing yeah. I just, there's a side oat conversation going on over here. So some people don't eat rolled oats. Rolled oats are still whole food plant-based. It's just been cooked. <laughs> you're, you're probably like, why are you talking about these oats? But if you're worried, oh. don't forget there are steel cut oats, which are oat groats. Just have the hull removed that are cut into two to three pieces are oat groats. So you can still have your oats no matter what you feel like is ultra process in your definition of a diet. So I know you have to go. What's the one thing you want us to know about fasting? Oh man. Oh gosh. There's so much. I think, um, the thing with fasting that I always like to, uh, it's like, it's a fun little, I know I mentioned it earlier, but it's basically, I want everyone to just remember that it is something that our ancestors did. So our ancestors, we live in this, uh, Dr. Goldhammer, phrase it so well he wrote a book on it called the pleasure trap where you know it's it's back in our ancestral days right they they would look for food hunted for food and then they would go days weeks maybe even without eating anything and that would allow their body to really just like heal right it's, it's amazing what that would do and that that's what um fasting is for um but now we live in this hyper abundant environment where we're surrounded by so many different things that are constantly triggering dopamine which is that neurochemical that want, that gets us addicted to things and makes us happy and all these things and you know a lot of things that do that are artificially um artificial like sugars and sweeteners and you know all these things that are found in like our hyper processed foods and so it makes it really hard to get out of that state of being addicted to something of like these foods that make us sick and um unhealthy and so um, I just want to leave people with that piece that it, it, that fasting is a way to break that cycle a little bit. Um, sometimes just trying to switch over to whole food plant based um, right away. It can be really hard for certain individuals that have been used to eating a lot of these hyper palatable foods for a very, very long time. And fasting can be a beautiful way to break that, to get rid of that addiction and to be able to refeed on beautiful plant based foods and to just be able to incorporate that as like more of a sustainable journey of eating those foods. So um, that it's not something that was just invented in the last 20 years. It's something that we've, our ancestors did. And like you had said, Kathy, certain religions even do still to this day, they go through periods of fasting and things like that. And so it's a beautiful way to heal. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I'm, you and I will talk. I'm wondering if we need more, another talk on fasting and you think about this, is there more stuff that you wanna share? Cause I feel like with my, just quick glance at things we get there's these places we can go to fast but it would be nice to know because they're very they're they're not inexpensive so it's not like right. 
do I have dinner or do I go do a, a week at a fasting center? You right. know? <laughs> it's a save up kind of thing, which is also why, you know, Dr. Stephanie Peacock, that's right over here. Let's see, there we go, pointing at you. Um, and some other people where you can do it from home. Although I'm kind of surprised True North is actually pretty affordable for a per night sort of thing. I think, don't quote me, but I think it's under $300 a day and you get meals and a place to sleep and you get lectures and stuff. So I was shocked, yeah. honestly. I thought it was going to be much more than that. Um, but that's why he can have people stay there 30 days, right? Right. With, without mm -hmm. like signing over your entire life and <laughs> yeah, he's made it very affordable which is wonderful for a lot of individuals that you know maybe are at their wits end with getting better and it's a way to get there and get healed so yes definitely. but it's also good to have a choice like you where you can do it at home so thank you if you guys have some questions about fasting or working with um dr peacock on fasting you can see her, her site is stephaniepeacock.com. You can email her through that. And maybe we should talk some more about fasting, but I think we can, we can also work on some, you know, you can talk about whatever you want, but if you guys have questions about fasting, um, email them to me at kathyhester at gmail.com and I'll queue them up for the next time in case you can't be here or something. And I'm just, um, yeah, there's just general conversation. I'm not seeing any any fasting chats now, but thank you so much as Aww. always for hanging out with me and my community. We love you so much. Oh, same to you and your community. Thanks to everyone for coming and, ha and thank you for Kathy for having me. I'll see you guys in another month. <laughs> okay, bye, have a great day. You too. All right, bye everybody. I'll talk to you real soon. <laughs>